Batman White Knight number three, Sean Murphy. Oof. <laughs> Oof indeed. So first of all, let's just let's just get the, the elephant in the room out of the way here with this issue. So in this universe, Jason came before Dick. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm over it already. I, it, 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 I don't when I was it. reading it, I was like, huh, okay. That's well, weird. Do, do the, the, thing was, the more it, I thought about it, the less it matters. The, the, yeah. the, the only problem with it, though, is I read that and went, wait, has this been Tim the whole time? Am I just, like, did we actually get the name? <laughs> I, I, I did I, that yeah. for a minute as well. For a split second, and then he Murphy does a uh, write in the dialogue where she had, where Barbara immediately calls him Dick. Yeah, and that was the other so, thing. Even if it was Tim, I was like, wait, why, why was Barbara not there until after Tim, if that yeah. was the case, like so all yeah. of it wasn't added. I was like, okay, fine. This universe, Jason was yeah. first, then Dick, and then Barbara came later. Like whatever. Yeah. But like, but I, I like how it speaks to this Batman, and and why he's so reckless and like he hasn't learned anything. Like he loses Jason, so right there he's zero for one with sidekicks. Oh yeah, it so just then that, it's that just makes for... him a little bit more distant towards Dick, and then Alfred raises him. Oh sure, Matt, so... I'm, I'm I'm not disputing the effect it has on him. It's oh, just no, no. it's just from, from the point of view of someone who's so used to what the Order of the Robins yeah. is, and is so used to that canon that yeah. just casually like bringing this up in issue three like this is like, whoa, wait, what? <laughs> like, yeah. uh, no, I agree, it's jarring and it's weird. But I, the more I think about that, I do quite like it. And you know what, what Matt was saying? He didn't learn because the, the 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 version we know. You know, so he loses Jason, and then he's kind of like, okay, I'm not doing this again. And yeah. Tim has to come and talk him into it and be like, no, no, this is oh. why you need a Robin. Whereas this Batman presumably never had that. Because yeah. it doesn't sound like Dick was like that. He just kind of picked Dick up and went, all right, you're next. Yeah. And mm. and that goes with this character where he's so relentless on stopping crime in Gotham, he doesn't care what the, the outcome is. As long as he's winning his war, Gotham's his city. And, you know, yeah, that comes from a nice place, but how is it impacting the rest of the city? And that's why Joker, well, Napier, is able to start gaining headway because, you know, yeah. of all this. And Oh, man. And then the start with, with what are we calling her, Neo-Joker? Neo-Joker, yeah. Oh, man. That was a fun twist I didn't right. see coming. Yeah, so, so Neo-Joker, that, that's the second Harley, right? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yep. So the, the, the Bimbo straight. Harley. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. This, is, this is the the more New Fifty Two era Har- Harley versus the original. Harley. And the fact you know that she's cracked because she's like, oh, he went and took all those drugs and fixed himself. He, he's ruining the Joker's legacy, and this is like, oh man, she is properly messed up. Like, yeah, she thinks Joker's the and and it just sets it up, and then you get that reveal of her, you know, kind of Jokerized and. Oh man, that was so cool. Yeah, the, 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 the idea that the two Harleys are going to end up fighting probably is quite an interesting mm-hmm. idea. But yes. you you have um, it's a very emotional issue. So so Batman is so reckless in this opening fight with all these villains that are being mind controlled yep. with Mad Hat or Tech with Clayface yep. into them all. You know that's what we kind of ended with the big cliffhanger yeah, yeah. last time. Uh, and we got we got Batgirl, we got Nightwing, we got Batman. They're all they're all fighting them. And Batman gets reckless. He actually chooses to use this library that's been built in the the the, the, yep. the bad part of town. And again, it's political ammo for for Napier uh, later yeah. on. But he basically he, he gets crushed on all the rubble. He gets out. He drives away. Uh, and we see that he's just covered in blood. And he's like next to Alfred in the hospital room. And he passes out. But Alfred like, wakes up. And sees that you know one last time Bruce needs to be fixed up, and then later on we come back to it. Batman wakes up in the bed. He's got all the you know the IV in him and all the rest of it, and he it's looks fixed. over in the chair. And Alfred is sitting in the chair, uh, with a note sitting next to him. He's passed away, and it's like oh one last time. Even though he was on his deathbed, he fixed Bruce up. Um, I'm not, I'm not gonna lie. I was reading this. My wife was watching TV uh-huh. next to her. I had to hide a tear. I couldn't oh, let her know I was crying reading no, no. comics. It, it's cause... it's it's all in Bruce's face. It's the smallest panel on that page. Yeah. It's Bruce's face. It's you know it's got the the dot 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 as he kind of sees it and realizes, and just the the look it kills me. Yeah, yeah. it, it kind of makes sense. Like it just it tells us have driving even further into the deep end. Like this is obviously yep. this is going to be the thing that spurs him on. He's and, slowly he's losing his ties to actual reality. Yeah, well that, that's what you that's know? what Dick and uh, Barbara are talking about. They're, they're, they're yep. at Jason's grave. And she's like, hey, 
Alfred was his lifeline to what it is it to be his human. Moral center. Yeah. So yeah. now the only thing protecting Gotham from Batman is us. Like we have to do something. I'm actually I was not expecting this when the book was announced or whatever, but I'm glad that Dick and Barbara seem to be playing relatively large parts in the story. Yeah, because we didn't get much of that before. Because obviously before we were like, okay, Joker's kind of the hero and Batman's maybe the villain. Yeah. That's kind of what we knew going yeah. in. Yeah. Uh, it's, but they're it's, both it's, great. Because yeah. for all this, for all the stuff that Napier's doing, it's like yeah, he has, he has the the uh, the, the the interest of of the lower rungs of Gotham at yeah. heart. Yeah, well, because he, that's he, really why he's not doing it. He's really just doing it as a finger to Batman. Yeah, he he does that whole thing with the villains at the start, and it's all just a ruse so he can get in to get yeah. to the financial records of the city, so yeah. that he can then prove this this Batman tax that's basically happening, yeah. where the city's yeah. playing three billion dollars a year. To clean up the mess that Batman makes, which, yeah, by the way, come on, Bruce, step it up. Yep, I'm going to call bullshit. I mean, I'm not going to. I don't care. This is not a complaint about the book, but just just in a sort of yeah. realistic sense, I want to just discuss this. That's a lot of money for tax yeah. in one city. There's yeah. no way in hell Batman causes three billion a year. Uh, no, damage. but that's not the point. The point is, is like they are taking every chance they can. This this one percent of Gotham All right, to okay, okay. tax the city. If you told me to, that this was this was like Batman's just the scapegoat on that. Yeah, if you well, told me see, that, if you told me this was Metropolis and Superman fighting aliens well, was causing this, I'd maybe yeah. buy it, right? See, here, I'd buy it. Though, maybe he is. If if you know this this thing with the library, if that's like a an every night. Thing oh sure, for yeah. Batman, for this because this version of yeah. Batman is that reckless. If but that's was... an everyday thing, then okay, maybe he does call well, yeah, it that much. Yeah, but if, if that's an everyday thing, like, how's the end of the city left standing? Yeah. <laughs> like, like yeah if he's been doing that, that for a couple that, of years. I just took it as, as it's going into Joker's plan even more, or Napier's plan, I keep calling him Joker, but they're two distinct personalities because they he, he refers to Joker as its own entity, yeah. right? Yeah, and of so, course... I was going to say, of course, another element yeah. here is that you've got Jim Gordon, who is trying to stick by Batman, but he's getting more flack from the, the police around him. He's, uh-huh. he's dealing with the press as they're bringing up this, this Batman yeah. tax. He didn't even know about it. He's, like, talking to Batman. Yeah. He's like, hey, like, really? That much? Like, this is what happens? Like, yeah, I like he the like, get it as, as, a as, as a cop. Yeah, it's yeah. like, yeah, I, I'm on your side as a cop. You you do the right thing. But knowing that I'm paying my taxes Tax this payers. much just to, to do yeah. this, it's a bit sketchy. Yeah, yep. so, so in, yeah. it's dealing with how it, how it's affecting different characters and what role they play in Batman's life. So Gordon's having like an effect here uh, with him like all of a sudden being the, the, almost the bad guy in the police department because he's the one like making calls to help Batman yep. instead of whatever else. And you've got how it's affecting Dick and Babs. You you got Alfred obviously is dead, uh, yep. and like then you have Napier who's using this to play the political game, and then he's going to. The, the the bad part of town, and we find out that Duke Thomas in this world is like this guy who's kind of unique. Instantly more likable than Duke Thomas in the proper continuity. He's only more interesting, but he's united all of the gangs yep. uh, to basically turn them, them into a private police force for the the slums. And yep. it's like, yeah, they still do some bad stuff, and I just kind of accept that because when they're called upon to like maintain order, they do. So he's, he's using what he's yeah. got to try and fix things. And well, uh, he, it's an interesting idea. I like how he says, too, he's like, well, how'd you get this to work? He's like, uh, I just told him that they can do the cops' job better than they can, and it'll embarrass the cops. <laughs> so they're down yeah. to do it. And it's, you know. But, yeah, this Duke, I just love, like, he was in the Special Forces, and he doesn't like Batman. He's like, nah, man, Batman's ruining my neighborhood. And I think he's just mainly talking about the concept of Batman you know, not the actual person. Yeah, I, I don't think he means Batman yeah. as a person has come in and destroyed yeah. too much of this neighborhood. I yeah. think he means the idea of Batman has let the police yeah. kind of get, they've wavered and you know, they don't they care want. anymore because they don't yep. feel like, ah, oh, Batman will well, get it's, it. It's kind of like what's going on in this country with the, with the police and what the two different sides are. You know, it's like, well, you guys are taking it too far. It's like, well, you don't understand what we're going through. Like, there's this pushback and a pullback and it's a constant struggle and here i think that's what duke's representing is like yeah we know the police are there for law and order but they're using batman as an excuse to take it too far and you know and so yeah and alternatively as well as take it too far not do anything in these areas because they can kind of go well you know batman's got that that's not our job anymore exactly so now he had to take it upon himself and organize his neighborhood to to stand up for himself that's what basically napier wants Gotham to do is stand up for yourself. There's more of us than there are of him, which has always been the thing with Batman. I mean, look at all of his rogues. If they could actually get together, 
in plan. Well, that's what, that's, what Bob, uh, that's what Babs even says at the start. That she doesn't know yeah. the main control, but her, her theory is right. like, maybe they finally figured out that we can't take them if they all work together. Yeah. yeah. But Napier knows that. Yeah, Napier yeah. does know that. Uh, and we yeah. find out, of course, uh, Neo Joker uh, finds Mad Hatter at the end. Uh, she's tracked them down and yep. you know, learns about the clay face and how they're, how, they're, how they're being controlled. That was gross. And she finds that room uh, where all the villains, all the rogue, the Batman rogue gallery are just standing like robots just waiting to be yep. used. Uh, pretty cool imagery, I have to say. Well, yeah. and, and you find out that earlier we see that the Harley and uh, Napier are, or Harley and we'll call her, and, and Napier, they're like, oh yeah, this will work, you know, I'll give you the headband because we don't need it right now. And then you find out through the Hatter, and I also love that he's talking in his, you know, Lewis Carroll isms, and she's just like, "Cut the crap! Tell me what's going on." And he's like, "Well, yeah, as long as I'm closer to Clayface's brain than Napier is." Can, can, can we, we can talk about Clayface's him. brain? Oof. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, what what a freaky image! What yeah. a ghastly. Yeah. It, it's it's a brain with a couple of eyes and a tongue sticking out of it. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, it's horrific and amazing. Uh, as, yeah, this was an all this issue of White Knight. It's kind of... Uh, we're getting a better sense of what it is. Um, obviously, it was eight issues in that total, so this is... Uh, we're almost halfway. Yep. Yeah. I think we're getting a sense of what, what the themes are. Uh, and I'm really curious as to where the, the end result of this book is going to be. Like, oh. Is it going to be a, a, a story where Batman learns from from what he's doing and learns his mistakes and learns yeah. or is it going to be this this crash and burn is he just going to is don't it a forget. tragedy is it a batman tragedy yeah don't forget when it starts batman's in arkham so that's true you yeah. know we'll yeah. see how that plays in if, if we do like a they catch him and then it's because of mad hatter and neo joker that they have to team up and that's where batman learns you know sometimes you have to put your faith in in people you normally wouldn't yeah i would, I would expect that, that 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 sort of like framing device that flash forward that that wouldn't be the very end of the story like that we'll get to no. that point uh either second last issue or early on in the last issue and then there'll be like yeah. a, a a proper like ending after that that'll sort of yep. wrap Agreed. it all up yeah uh but no uh, very so obviously the art sean murphy uh okay, great as ever yeah, it, very, it, yep. not even worth mentioning at this point no. because so, it's just the same things every every issue yep this so is freaking consistent i love i mean his Nightwing looks like the animated series Nightwing. Like, it's mm. spot on. You know, so the fact that they can do that. And then even his Barbara, I love I love her Batgirl costume. It's so different than what I'm used to seeing out of Batgirl. You know? I'm not super into the costumes per se, but I, I'm fine with it in this, this world, this yeah. version, if you will. Yeah, yeah. well, if it was, yeah, if, if this was a an incontinuity story, different. Yeah.